Hello everyone. Hi guys. Uh, today we're going to do uh, episode two yeah. uh, in our little series of our Philippine journey. And, uh, you know, in episode one, I talked about my first trip to the Philippines yeah. and how I enjoyed myself and I got into some detail on some things that I remember uh, about that first trip. So this uh, video is really going to be about the next three trips. So we took a total of four trips before uh, we decided to move here full time. So our fifth trip to the Philippines um, as a couple um, was the trip that we actually moved here full time yeah. uh, and after we retired. So this is really about the next three trips uh, and how they were all similar. And uh, really that was uh, the deciding factor, those three trips that sparked us uh, to retire to the Philippines. So remember in episode one, I said, um, it was just an ember burning, uh, just a, you know, a, a distant thought of uh, you know, spending more time in the Philippines. And even then, um, that first trip, to be honest with you, we didn't think about we would ever move to the Philippines full time. No, we never did. It didn't really cross our mind. You no. know, our thought process was we would both remain in the U.S., continue working till typically what most people do, 62, 65 years old, because that's typically what everyone does, uh, and then just go back and forth, and we just happen to pick four, every four years. Yeah. That's what we said. Every four years, you know, maybe as we got old, there would be every three or every two, um, but just go back and forth. That was the thought process. So when I said at the end of episode one, you know, that started the small ember burning, you know, there is truth to that, but really at that point, we didn't think about full time. Never. Yeah. Uh, and think about <laughs> buying land or anything <laughs> like that. So the next three trips, um, you know, we spaced them out every few years. I think one time it was three years. So I think the, the next trip was uh, like 2008 and then 2010. So that was two years. Yeah. Uh, and then it was another trip in between uh, then in 2018. It was somewhere around... Uh, around that 14, oh no, 2012. 2012, yeah. yeah. 2012, because that's when we came back mm -hmm. and said, hey, I think we're going to move to the Philippines yeah. uh, full time, or at least that was my thought. So yeah. I wanna say right off the bat, the initial thought of moving to the Philippines full time was mine. <laughs> it was not yours. No, I was uh, looking at you like, are you for real? Is that what you really want to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, the next three trips, you know, we came basically the same as the first trip. It was about three weeks, a little over three weeks. What I typically, typically would do is I'd take a uh, three weeks vacation, and that's the max I could take uh, at my job, and Wilma's job as well. Yeah. But then we took like three personal days, and we used that for like travel days, because we knew it was gonna take like a day and a half to get here, and a day and a half to get back. Yeah. So we used those three days. So we usually would tack three days onto a 21 day vacation. That's why I said 21 to 24. Went back and thought about it, and that's how we did it. Mm -hmm. We did 21 days vacation with an additional three days of personal time. So each of the trips was the same, uh, 24 days. And uh, you know that sounds like a lot of time, um, but it's really not when you're traveling on the other side of the world. No, especially when you're visiting your family. Yeah. And you're spending time with them. It's like it's not enough time to yeah. visit everybody. Yeah. And what I tried to do the second trip and then third trip, fourth trip, is I would go to Wilma and say, you know, can we venture out a little bit uh, to see different parts of the Philippines? Because, again, I think that Ember was burning. And I was just saying, you know, I just don't want to be in her barangay for the full 21 days. Mm -hmm. You know, though we were keeping busy, we're going to the beach and we're going to some waterfalls yeah. uh, and doing, you know, some traveling around. Uh, but it was all pretty much local within, you know, a few miles of where she grew up. I wanted to branch out a little bit. So I think the second trip, we didn't do much. I think we went to like Ormok, we went to Tacloban and just kind of saw the areas a little bit. Yeah. So we stayed within within Leyte. 
Um, never thought about uh, looking at real estate. And I think that was the same uh, for the third trip. We stayed within Leyte um, and just, uh, you know, kind of looked at the tourist spots. Mm, yeah. So it was a true vacation. Uh, but again, just uh, enjoying the culture, enjoying the people. Um, and for someone that, you know, grew up and lived in a first world country, the United States, uh, big difference. Big, vast difference. It's a big shock for you. Yeah, it's it's a culture shock uh, yeah. in a positive way, and then you know some challenges as well. The heat was still there every time <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we decided to come for Fiesta, which was in August yes. in her barangay, and uh, you know it was just I can just remember the heat, heat, heat. Uh, but then uh, that 2012 trip, which was um, the actual fourth trip uh, to the Philippines. Um, it was a little more eye-opening because we got a chance to venture out uh, and see more of the country. Yeah. Um, and again, I think the ember was burning, even though I didn't make the connection yet uh, when I was there uh, until I got home. Uh, but again, we really enjoyed ourselves. You know, we went to some different islands uh, got to see more of the uh, country. We started uh, to just look at property, not to buy, no. <laughs> but just to pass the day. Like, well, if we're going to go to this island, why don't we uh, just take a look around and see what's available? So we were looking at some homes, uh, looking at land, but it was really just uh, to pass the day. Yeah, we did that in Ormoc. We look at the a house, house and lot. Yeah. 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 So we did that, and uh, again, not really connecting the dots at that point mm -hmm. uh, because we were happy with just going back and forth. But then uh, when we got back to the U.S., and this was 2012, and it's part of our entire story that we told as an introduction on our channel when we first started the channel. Um, when I got back from that trip, um, that's when I said to Wilma, do you think we could retire? And I was 45 at the time. <laughs> do you think I could retire at age 55? Because she's the banker of the family. She's in charge of all finance. <laughs> um, and, you know, she said, absolutely, we could yeah. if we did things correctly. Yeah. You know, so, you know, we're planners. Um, we didn't want to, you know, just uh, up and just leave and not be prepared. No. So we sat down, we did spreadsheets on yeah. Excel we with our... what, what income was coming in, yeah. both our incomes and our bonuses. And then we took a look at our expenses and then what money was left over. Um, we started thinking about leasing vehicles instead of buying vehicles to time when we can turn in our, uh, you know, the vehicles. Uh, we talked about having our house uh, ready to go uh, yeah. for sale. We didn't want to have to have to do a lot of things uh, to it to get it prepped. So all those discussions took place uh, over that 10 year period. Yeah. I mean, that's a long period of time. So what I'm saying is the United States didn't push me away to come to the Philippines. The Philippines really pulled me here. So I, I, wanna, I wanna say that because you know there's all different types of expats. And to be just brutally honest, you know there's a whole host of characters, which I'm one of them, uh, that is here. And not always, and this is important for everyone to know, and it's just telling the truth. All Western countries don't send their best to the Philippines. <laughs> uh, so you need to use caution. Yeah. Um, and you just need to be careful with who you make friends with. Um, and if you're thinking about starting a business, which we highly recommend not to, uh, who you get in business with, um, who you spend your time with, because we hear all the time of challenges. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And it's and it's a real shame. And you know, most of our knowledge of issues uh, is stems around uh, home building. Um, and I say this all the time. Mm -hmm. Actually, we just came back from a, another Christmas party last <laughs> night, and I said to one of the yeah. the people there, um, in my opinion, eight out of ten. That's a big number, guys. Eight out of ten have trouble. Uh, some uh, fashion 
either with their contractor or with title in the property or whatever the case may be. And some people lose large sums of money. So that was a consideration when we were thinking about moving here because we knew that not everyone that comes to the Philippines is coming for you know the right reasons. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, the bad characters get the you know the publicity, and that's not the case. Um, you know, most of the people, the vast majority of the expats here are just good people. Not everybody yeah. wants to build a house. Not everybody wants to buy a house. You know, the vast majority wants to rent. And that's probably 80%. I would imagine, you know, my number is not scientific, uh, but about 80% of the foreigners that come to the Philippines um, just want to rent and they're happy with that. Yeah. Um, comment below if you agree with that assessment, about 80%. So people like us uh, that's been in long-term relationships that feel very comfortable about uh, buying land, building a house because of the Philippine laws here where the land can only be owned uh, by the Philippine citizen. Um, you know, there's always a lot of negativity around that. And mm -hmm. I understand that. Yeah. You know, I can understand of that. Of course, yeah. If, if I came here as a single person and met somebody uh, and started a relationship, would I purchase land and put it in that person's name. A lot yeah. of people do. Uh, me personally, probably not. I would probably be in that eighty percent. Uh, just be happy with uh, with renting. So we had that thought. Let's let's. I think we can do it. I think we can take over the next ten years, and that's a lot of time. And I'd like to also know. Comment below. How many years did you prep? before you decided to come to the Philippines. Yeah, that's was good it, to know. Yeah, it would be good to yeah. know, right? It would be interesting. <laughs> I think 10 years is gonna be on the high side. I think you're gonna hear a lot of five years or a couple of years yeah. <laughs> where you know someone's getting close to retirement, not happy with their home country, and I can understand why with cost of living and all the political mess that's happening, turmoil throughout the world, you know, want a quiet you know, life in the Philippines. Uh, you know, the Philippines, uh, most people speak English, so it's very easy for someone like me from the U.S. to move here because most people do speak English. Uh, the cost of living is, is much cheaper, um, and you can just really settle down and have, have a nice life. It's attractive. And then throw in the weather, the tropical feel, you know, the ocean. I mean, we have, as you guys know, a very nice ocean view, yeah. and that's everything to us. You know, uh, having a piece of property and building a house, looking at, you know, your neighbor's house wasn't attractive to us. We really wanted that uh, ocean view because we feel this is going to be our, our last house. Um, so, you know, we thought it through. We really planned it out. And it was a 10 year plan. You know, and I've had a lot of people come to me and say, you know, how did you retire so early? They asked me how old I was when I retired. And the plan was 55, but because of uh, the pandemic, we got out of Dodge yeah. <laughs> a year early. one year early <clears throat> yeah. uh, because we, you know, we just timed it that way. <laughs> um, so I actually moved here at 54 instead of 55. And a lot of people will come to me and say, how, how could you retire so early? Mm -hmm. And I just tell the story that, you know, we thought this out 10 years prior or nine, nine years prior to that. And really sacrificed. Yeah, so we still go on vacation, but mm -hmm. just not, you know, like we used to. Right. Yeah. And we saved money. Yeah, we just saved money. Yeah. You know, just, and we thought it through. Yeah. Like I said, we had a spreadsheet, and we knew how much we made, and we knew how much our bills was, and we tried to keep our bills as low as possible. Um, you know, didn't buy that filet mignon every week. We ate, you know, more hamburger, things like that. We <laughs> did uh, sacrifice a bit because we always try to save as much as possible. And then every year when we would get our bonuses at the end of the year, or even our raise, you know, some years we got 3% yeah. 3, 3 raise. We said that raise is going into the Philippine yeah, fund. Yeah, we don't We, we don't didn't need spend it that then, 3%. Yeah, why spend it now, right? Right. Yeah. Any extra, 
anything that you could uh, put away, right. you know, it's, it's good. Yep. We did taxes at the end of the year when we got our refund, 100% into the Philippine fund. <laughs> I mean, we really sacrificed over those nine years to put away as much uh, money as possible. And then we had our house. Yeah. And, you know, we put 50% down on that house when we built it. So we didn't have a big mortgage. So we knew when we sold the house um, that we still had to pay, you know, part of the mortgage off. off. Yeah. But um, we were going to get a nice lump sum as well. And then throw in the fact that it was during the pandemic. We were one hour outside of New York City. Uh, a lot of people was trying to get out of the city at that point, New York City. And uh, we sold our house in three days. And we had four offers uh, within the first uh, week. So we were very lucky yeah. um, and, you know, really did well uh, with that. So there was luck involved, but there was also a lot of, uh, you know, saving and, and trying to do everything we could. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people do come here with varying degrees of upfront money, infrastructure money, and they run out. Yeah. It does happen. And we did not want that to yeah. happen to us. It happened. It happened to a lot of people here. It happens to a lot. Yeah. And we hear a lot of the stories. And, and I guys, I probably tell you one out of 10 stories. We get so many stories, especially when we meet new people. We hear their story. You know, and we hear success stories, and then we hear stories that are not successful. Yeah, unfortunately. And it's very, very hard to hear just because we know what it feels like to say, hey, we're going to retire for me to a foreign country, which is scary within itself. I mean, think about the amount of people that retire. Say 100 people retire in your first world country. So I'm talking United States, Canada, Germany. Norway, Sweden, Finland, UK, uh, New Zealand, Australia. I mean, for the most part, those are the countries where people are coming here, for the most part. Um, and, you know, you have your, your good job and, you know, you have your benefits and, and you have all that. And you do your best to save as much money as you think you need. And then you come here and you didn't prepare properly and or you just burn through your money way too fast or you got scammed or you got taken advantage of all the above you know how just horrendous is that's, that that's sad because they work Extremely you know you, you work really hard for that money now you yeah. have to go back to where you come from and think right. about go back to work right that's that's a shame yeah and part of my plan was uh you know i wanted to work 35 years because <clears throat> that is the maximum amount of years for social security now, of course you get social security if you work less than that but they they only look at your top 35 earned years so part of the decision too was for me to to get to that 35th year of employment so I paid into the system uh, so I can get the maximum benefit when I turn 62 uh, and I'm 56 at this point so we definitely thought it through and we really want to say uh, you need to do the same thing you know how many times have we said take it slow you know don't hurry into anything yeah. and that's usually when you're here and it's usually around buying land or buying a house but it also holds very true if you're in your home country right now. And so many of you email us and say, hey, we're just like you guys. We're in our home country and we're three years away, two years away, one year away. Uh, very rarely do I hear I'm 10 years away like we were. Yeah. <laughs> and I always think in the back of my mind and I think of what we sacrificed. Boy, I hope that person is really getting their ducks in a row because of the horror stories that, that we hear. And for some reason we get, everybody is kind of, you know, attracted to us to visit the home. And, you know, we like people coming up, but they tell us their horror stories and it's hard to hear. It is. It, it's hard. It's very, very hard. Wilma said it good just a few minutes ago. You know, they work 20, yeah. 30 40 years, Many years for that yeah. for your retirement hoping for it to be stress-free happy relaxing oh it's, you're, we're gonna retire to the Philippines it's gonna be a tropical island I'm gonna be able to go scuba diving I'm gonna be able to 
you know, go swimming in the ocean. I'm, it's going to be warm weather year round. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to get there. You know, and it's all these uh, videos you see of everybody showing beaches and bikinis. Everything is perfect. It never rains in the Philippines. There's never any issues. You know, and then they get here and they burn through their money because they didn't prepare. So guys, sit back, think it through. Watch all these great channels of these uh, guys who are saying, like us, you know, make sure you're financially set. So three additional trips. We started, you know, getting more thought driven on possibly moving here that last trip. Um, and then we put the plan in place. Um, it was a solid 10 years. We moved here in nine. Um, we're happy that we did. No regrets. Yeah, no regrets. Uh, she said that kind of quietly. <laughs> no regrets or no regrets. a little. Re let me let me say this. She was more reluctant <laughs> to move, retire to the Philippines <laughs> than I was. And that is because you just know how the country operates. That is true, yeah. And it was so much different back then, 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. It's changed a lot. It changed a lot. Changed for the better uh, in a lot of areas. In some way, yeah. Uh, but still, there's, there's issues. Um, and it's just frustrating. It is. Right? I mean, just simple things. You go get a driver's license and you go to Teller 1 and they say you need to do X, Y, Z. And then you happen to go to Teller 3 and they're like, oh, no, you don't need to do that. You need to do 1, 2, 3. You know, it, it's just, it seems like the rules are different um, all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you do have to be on your toes, so to speak, because foreigners do get the foreigner price. Then that is true. I know some of you uh, think that, oh, you just, you know, want to be cheap and you want to lure down and they're poor, the sport thing, you know, you just want to make a little money. I said, you know, guys, here, it's a shame to say, but they do give a different price for a foreigner. Yeah, and that it does is, happen. That and is, not always. No. Not always, but sometimes it's egregious. Sometimes it's, it's, it's so... Um, blatant it's it's hard to even understand it's hard to mm -hmm. fathom um, because uh, when you ask the price and the person pauses they pause for a long time to, <laughs> to think it through because they're doing the math they know they sell it for twenty dollars and they're mm -hmm. going okay I got to double it always seems to be double at least our experience mm -hmm. and uh, they think it through and they say forty you know, and everybody says, you know, well, just don't be there. Let let your Filipino do the shopping. Well, we like being together. Yeah. When we go shopping, you know, we go together. We enjoy our day together. Uh, so, you know, you just have to be aware of it and just know that when you get that price, you need to know the prices that takes time. You just walk away. I mean, you don't make a big deal. You don't say, oh, that's the foreigner price. You just walk away and you just go to somebody else. Uh, but we wanted to do this video uh, just to explain to you, you know, how it worked for us, how we thought it through, how we were quite innocent just coming to the Philippines, mm -hmm. enjoying vacation, um, and then how it turned into uh, a full-time retirement for us. Um, we're pleased that we did it. Um, I think now you're very happy that you retired. No more work. Yeah, now that our house are finished and we start to enjoy it now. That's a big, uh, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a really good point. Yeah. You know, now that the house is built and we're settled in and we're really enjoying ourselves, you know, we can sleep in if we want. We don't have to go anywhere if we don't want to. You know, we can really settle in. No more rent, which is huge. Yeah. Um, you know, our expenses is low and uh, we can really, you know, enjoy ourselves. So that's our video on, you know, that transition, that thought process on our next couple of visits. Uh, to the Philippines, and then uh, the next uh, video will be um, from New York, from the USA, and how we prepared our home for sale, selling all our uh, items, how we started thinking about our banking, um, all that prep work that we could do in the U.S. before getting here. 
because there was a quite a bit of things that we did um, in preparation before we moved here. So uh, that's going to be the next video in this little series. Uh, this is episode two. That'll be episode three. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.